Okay, this time to summarize few things and then take and give some kind of meaning to our uh, chemi chemistry that we have been studying and then also answer as to why, what will be the ozone levels really be having seen so much of complicacy in the things. Okay. So, it is it's very much generalized of the version that we have done so far. Okay. Let us have a quick look on to that. Nothing new about this, nothing new about this, this we all know, but what new thing we have learned in few lectures is this reaction. Okay. That hydrocarbons, okay, they do react with OH radicals okay, and then they are <coughs> H 2 is formed and the radical which will generally with the alkyl radical is formed. Okay. That can react with the oxygen to make the peroxy radicals okay, that we have seen that. Okay. So, these peroxy radicals either will produce H O 2 or they themselves can oxidize the N O. Okay. If you recall what was the chemistry of methane? Okay. What happened in the case of methane? What peroxy radical did we make last time? CH 3 or 2? CH 3 O 2, right? Methyl peroxyl radical, right? What that radical did to NO? It is reacted with NO to form the NO 2. Okay. And in turn when we are reading about the NO, uh, reading about the CO and other hydrocarbons, it was largely, it was being, we were form, forming the HO 2. Okay. And hydroproxy radical HO 2 can react very quickly with NO to produce NO 2 and moisture. Oh, sure. That is correct. So, we have the two mechanisms, but bottom line is that it is that the hydrocarbons that we have so many in the atmosphere. So, it can make the peroxy radical, it can be peroxy radical in terms of the, the basic compound that example was a methyl peroxy radical that is CH 3 O 2 or it can make H O 2 that was a hydroperoxy radical. Okay. Those will eventually what they will do peroxy radicals is oxidize N O into N O 2 and we get lots of N O 2 and once you have the lots of N O 2 you get lots of ozone okay. and therefore, ozone is not only just produced by these reactions, right, they are produced by this reaction, but the source of NO2 is simply not this reaction. That is what is in summary I wanted to say that uh, the source of NO2 is just not this reaction, but source of NO2 is this reaction triggered by the photochemistry and triggered by the hydrocarbons that we have. Okay. There are many more things in this one, but that is what is the, the basic thing that we wants, want to answer the question of ozone because ozone was one of our criteria pollutants, caused lots of problem, gives lot of difficulty and then uh, it caused lots of problem in the lungs. So, ozone measurement becomes important and why we had to study so much? Because the ozone is a secondary pollutant. Had it been primary pollutant, go to the factory, go to the car, fix it there. We cannot fix it in the car, we cannot fix ozone in the power plant because these are not generated from the power plant. Okay. This is again in the form of summary uh, to give you more feel of the overall system. Okay. Somebody, this is will be much easier for you to remember. Of course, some basic chemistries you have to remember. So, it does not matter where you start from. Okay. You have the have some NO2 okay, that can break down this should be read as H nu. This can be broken to NO and NO can go two paths, okay. but this NO can be come from breaking of this one or the NO here can be very much the primary source that has been generated. So, this NO if you start from NO can follow two routes okay, this way or that way. Okay. And so, part of NO comes, but this part definitely will give you some NO and some oxygen here atomic oxygen. This atomic oxygen is in what state? nascent oxygen, but in the ground state or excited state? Ground state. Ground state. Because the ground state oxygen will react, ground state O will react with oxygen. 
if you are in excited state it cannot react with oxygen. Since it cannot react with oxygen, therefore we will not form the ozone, we will form, will form rather OH radicals, right. And if you are not forming the OH radical, nothing would happen in the atmosphere, okay. So, this will form this one and the part of this will be in the excited state, that will go the other way. That cannot combine with oxygen, this is a summary of what we did and we have the hydrocarbon that is coming up here, reacts with this O or OH radicals okay, and it forms the, uh, it breaks down to alkyl radical if you like. Okay. That reacts with oxygen to form the hydroperoxy radical, right. Okay. Hydroperoxy radical either as a hydroperoxy radical or uh, 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 the peroxy radical, it can be RO2 or it can be even HO2. Okay. That can react with excess of NO which you have lots of NO in the atmosphere react with this thing okay, and eventually this will become RO, but what you will get is the NO2 okay. and then you have the lots of NO2. If you recall the first lecture when we were talking about the atmospheric chemistry, we were simply talking about this route and we had modeled this route. Okay. We had not considered that route. Okay. If you consider this route as well, then Okay, then of course, you are producing more NO2 and that more NO2 means more ozone. Okay. And once people started considering these things, the model started fitting the observed ozone concentration. Okay. So, this what is the thing, always remember that what you do in theory should be checked with the practical thing. Okay. And now, the people who do most of the experiment, they, they are talking the other way. They said whatever you do in practical or whatever the observations you got through the experiments, you must look for the theory to explain that. Okay. Obviously, I mean we do not want to deal the things in a black box mode. If you have got the experimental results, well you can say if this is high, that is high. The question is why? The science is all about asking why. Okay. So, not only that, well of course, the, the experimentalists used to say, oh well theory you can do anything, but see if what happens practically. And now the people in practical, they said, well you are observing it practically, you are finding it through the experiment means, what is the theory behind it? And theory or the science, what you will do in your M tech thesis is the theory or sometimes we use, what is the mechanism? All research is about mechanism, to understand the mechanism. Okay. So, this is what is the mechanism. Having said this picture very you know, in a very simplistic way, the reactions that we are talking about, the R's here, hundreds and thousands of R are there in the atmosphere. Okay. So, it is almost like impossible for us to sit down in this room and just simply do something. So, people will have with all the computers that they have, they will run the very huge models, okay, where they can consider all the species, their rate constant and their chemistry behind it and then with the time variability in the mind, they can model the whole thing. Okay. And those models people have done and then they have tried to explain what is the variability, what is the scenario of the ozone that you get. We will come to that, but there is something more happens other than the ozone. That also is a very serious, a very important part of the, the, the chemistry and also very important pollutants. Okay. I am sure sometimes you go in the, um, the area and there is emissions and you know like you, your eyes burn you know like. Okay. Because many of the species uh, which are formed in the atmosphere is just simply not ozone, but you see, see here peroxyacetylnitrile in short form it is called PAN, PAN is a serious pollutant. All the short life of the PAN is very small, it can decompose quickly. So, this is what we are forming okay, from uh, whatever uh, aldehydes you can think of, reacts with OH radical, then it forms the uh, acetyl, radi acetyl radical, but this acetyl radical can react with the oxygen and form acetyl peroxy radical. Okay. This acetyl peroxy radical, okay, O2 as you see, acetyl peroxy radical, that can react with NO2 and this particular thing, okay, this particular thing can combined NO2 along with this one. Okay. Okay. So, this is a very special reaction, I mean, you know like. So, it can react to form the, what is we call as a PAN. Okay. And people have measured PAN in the atmosphere, pungent 
smell, eye irritant, makes you very un uncomfortable, although decomposes very quickly. Okay. We will not go into the details, but you see if you go somewhere, you are asking, you say, I have done the course in air pollution, and they say, oh, do you know about PNs and PBNs? Okay. Well, he himself probably would know to this extent only, but then you sure, yes, PN and PN are the photochemical compounds from the atmosphere, which is part of the smoke that we see sometimes because of the photochemistry, and PN and PBN are very serious pollutants. Okay. So, PBN is that well, you have more aromatic and benzene, okay, and then the NO2 combines with that one. So, what you are doing here is basic, basically this, this thing is replaced by the benzene and one hydrogen atom, that is where the CO is coming. So, this called peroxy benzol nitrate. Okay. That is what is the name given to this one. The PBN is also serious and PN form is more than compared to this one, because you know uh, other um, um, aldehydes are there and then this also is formed in the atmosphere. Just for your knowledge, you should know what is PAN and what is PBN. Okay. But these are the problems, but the control of them, these compounds are only control of the hydrocarbon species, which people do attempt for the hydrocarbon species. Okay, let us quickly talk about SO2 very, very briefly, very, very briefly, because we have to cover many, many things. Okay, much radical in this reaction happen both in the gas phase as well as in the aqueous phase and also onto the surface of the particles for SO2. So, OH radicals you can form the, it can oxidize sulfur dioxide to HSO2, but this thing, this is the main reaction, rest depends on this one while we are talking about the gas, gas phase reaction. So, this can combine with oxygen again and give the HO2 plus SO3, HO2 is again hydroperoxy radical important for us, okay. it just, it just appears again and again, but the SO3 what you are seeing SO3 is always remember SO3 is highly reactive, can instantly combine with the water. Okay. In fact, it will be very difficult, not so easy at least you know like uh, to measure SO3, because the moment it is a moisture, it must produce sulfuric acid. Okay. It should produce sulfuric acid, that is what you are seeing here. But if you recall, we also had given the aqueous phase reactions of sulfur dioxide. And I, re I recall, if, if, you, if you, I recall and you recall that we were also making hydrogen peroxide in the atmosphere. How that happened? How, how we made H2O2? How was H2O2 formed? Lots of HO2 that we are getting, then HO2, HO2 can combine okay, to produce H2O2, right. H2O2 and this H2O2 is particularly um, important for oxidation of sulfur dioxide, but in the aqueous phase, okay. because you have the uh, water vapors are always there, some condensation takes place on the surface of the particle and things like that and that this H2O2 is very good in oxidizing SO2. Okay. And once it oxidizes, you know like it forms sulfuric acid, I gave you the example, I even showed you that one of the techniques for the measurement of sulfur dioxide is absorbing the SO2 into H2O2 and that will produce sulfuric acid almost instantly. Okay. So, you can, you can convert this first into SO3 by the oxidation and then eventually you will produce the sulfuric acid. Okay. So, that you can see the aqueous phase sometimes is much more important than this one. Okay. Apart from the aqueous phase, there is also the reactions can occur onto the solid phase. Okay. Iron acts as a, as a catalyst and also as a quick, it fastens the uh, oxidation SO2 into sulphates. Okay. See, this is the levels which you might get in the rural area, but urban areas level of iron is high, very high, okay. like almost 2.1 micron, it is not a small number. Okay. Source of iron can be uh, largely be what? The factories dealing with the iron smelters, iron processing, uh, cupolas, and uh, if you recall the arc furnaces and things like that. And what else? 
what are the major components of the soil? Silica is there, aluminium is huge and iron is no small. Okay. So, this iron also you will find very easily even the rural areas and things like that. So, this SO2, okay, they can also you know there can be a little moisture as well here and then the SO2 can you know and envelops the whole thing and the reaction can occur as a result you can form the sulphate. So, you can almost have the all kinds of reaction gas to gas, gas to liquid and gas to solid phase reaction also. And uh, dissolved oxygen can be oxidized uh, once you are in the aqueous phase because you also can have the aqueous phase right over here. Okay. And then you can make the SO2 uh, and the presence of iron can go into the sulphates okay. and you can form the sulphates. And uh, obviously, if your atmosphere is rich in this one, your atmosphere is rich in photochemistry as you see we form the lot of H2O2. So, many times you know people say oh sulphur dioxide levels are low, oh there is no pollution problem in sulphur dioxide, but they do not know and then they try to do the mass balance of sulphur dioxide it does not fit oh we are emitting so much of SO2, but we compare with the SO2 levels what we get in ambient air are very low. Where is SO2 going? SO2 is going to sulphates. So, when you want to look at the mass balance of sulphur dioxide, when you want to answer the question why SO2 levels are low, in, in India SO2 levels are really low. So, perhaps, okay, well of course, we we'll need to really examine and say that well SO2 is going into the sulphates and sulphates particles are formed and then the problem associated with sulphur dioxide is translated or transformed into problem of the sulphate particles. Okay. That is you can get the secondary particles also. We will not talk about the SO2 any further because that is enough. We may be, we maybe we will talk about the formation of secondary particles. That is what some uh, the Bara is trying to look into his study for his PhD research. How fast the particles are formed because of the gases as being the precursor gases. Okay. There was another M Tech student who worked onto this one, and he kind of found out that as if the SO2 levels were low at the same time sulphate levels were high in India. Okay. And then he could explain as to why SO2 levels are low and sulphate levels were high. Almost like um, the sulphate levels were um, many times higher than the SO2 level itself. Because see our, our the science is same, but the extent of chemistry in this our area in India will be very different as compared to no, the, the country which are colder from the colder region and things like that. How would the spatial variability? How would you? How would the spatial variability? Spatial variability. Okay. <coughs> See, the reaction uh, quickly occurs, and once you have the source of SO2, it's just a matter of two hours, three hours that most of the things will be converted into the sulphates. So, if you are looking at the really wind speed, you will find that well, once the wind has traveled a distance of two, three kilometers the most of the SO2 or at least depending on the all equilibrium constants at least 50 percent of SO2 would be converted into the sulphates. Okay. So, if you are if you are close to the source you will find SO2, but you have little away from the source you will find lots of sulphates rather than SO2 okay. and that is how we say well the problem may be that of the sulphates may be not that much of SO2. So, maybe in your context in Indian context you want to measure the particles and you want to measure the sulphate content of the particles rather than harping a, a, doing a great deal on SO2, because SO2 may not be and same thing you see the, the particles see and the other thing in India is it all happening on the surface of the particles. Okay. Our conditions are very dusty we all know that right. If you go to North America oh you know particle concentration will be about 30 microns or we might have 300 to like 600. So, we have lot of particles. Okay. And then as a result the chemistry on the particles can become important for us. So, we will get probably more sulphates than what we what they get. Okay. They will if in fact oh well on the on the contrary they will also get the sulphate, but they will get the sulphate in what form? They will get the sulphate in the form of H2SO4 okay. because they do not have the particles and neutralization and things like that you know. Whereas, we will get the most of sulphate on the particles. Okay. They may have large problem of acid rain. We do not have problem of acid rain not so much is because we have a lot of dust and that suppose the particles are alkaline which is the case in many of our, our, our northern area. If the particles are alkaline even if some sulphuric acids form it will be neutralized by them okay, because this is alkaline. So, uh, in fact, you will be surprised so all since the question has come up 
what is the pH of the rain water? 5 point something, why because of carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide is, is in saturation with the water vapor uh, water drops and as a result the pH is something like on the saturation level of CO2 the pH is around 5.6, okay, so low pH, huh? but it does not last very long it quickly gets back to the normal pH 7, but the kind of rain that we get in India the pH is like 8.7, 8.8, people have reported pH up to 9, 9.5 as if we don't we have the problem of the alkaline rain if there is a problem rather than the problem of the acid rain so we have the alkaline rain but what is happening with time because we are increasing the so2 emissions and the particulate levels are well either the same or they are reducing so as a result the ph of the thing is coming down so now we get the ph of rainwater anything between 6.5 to something like 8 or something you know depending on the what locations you are, but in the country where the soil is not alkaline, you may face the problem of acid rain. Okay. So, that is how these issues are, but let us quickly go to the something else. So, SO2 thing is very, very interesting and um, let us see what is, what else is there. Okay. Now, we have fairly good idea as to what is happening in the atmosphere and now we want to see as how with time as our daily routine starts okay how the pollutants will look in the atmosphere okay so wake up early in the morning okay and then you are following your daily routine you go and then around 9 30 10 you see the CO levels will be peak, lots of traffic and things like that. Okay. And uh, although we have talked about the CO chemistry, okay, but CO is still a very, I would not call it in, inert, but does not react so easily. It is so difficult to convert CO into CO2. So, life or half life or the, or the residence time for CO is high. So, as you say the people go for their work, activity start, it goes up afternoon it reduces okay, because active, many of the activities ceases and then again in the evening it increases. Always remember the peak in the evening is not as prominent as in the morning because you all can understand people go to the, their work at the same time, but in the evening people are out in a very diffused way. Okay. So, it is not the peaks will not be the same. Okay. Okay, then let us see what happens to the other other species? Ano will be closely following the source. Okay. What the question for you is now how the NO2 will look like? It will be like same as NO2 or something else. Difference there will be a lag because most of the time we are emitting NO and that NO converts into NO2. Okay. So, let us see what kind of thing we are getting. Okay. This hydrocarbons will be same as, as this thing, but let us quickly look at this is NO2. Okay. So, if you are measuring the things, oh, well, so well, let us capture the maximum concentration. I say, well, I am going to run my sampler only for this period, okay, because that is where I have the maximum pollution. And you always report, oh, NO2 is not a problem. Okay. So, this see just see I mean we do the science just not for getting a job, we do the science to solve the problems and so knowledge of the science is so important to find the solution. Okay. So, of course, the NO2 will peak little bit around 12 or something and then you will see then again maybe in the night not so much, but it will peak little bit and then again it goes off to the normal low values and things like that. Okay. Suppose I am staying in Kanpur on the GT road, okay, and then people say, okay, the, the, the no entry is opened after eight o'clock. We see you go to the GT road and they open this thing. So then, what will happen? Let's say I'm looking at, uh, for example, NO. Okay, this little reddish thing. So after eight o'clock, I will I may get a little peak here because trucks cause a lot of NO. NO, 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 so they will NO and what will happen to NO2? 
not NO2 probably will not peak so much as the NO will peak because in the night time all the reactions that we have talked about are not likely to occur. Something else happens okay, that we will probably talk or do not talk, but what you will see is that well if you open the truck okay, and then you see the NO levels going up a little bit okay, as the trucks on especially on the GT road, but you see NO2 probably it, it picks up, okay, but not as much or that not lag, lag phase is also not so much, NO2 levels also will not go so much. Okay, because there is no one to convert the NO into NO2, largely reaction is with ozone, ozone also will disappear, we will see the how the ozone will be. And now I want to plot for ozone now, how the ozone will look like, just tell me what time ozone is likely to peak. Afternoon, after NO2. After NO2. So, if you want to measure the ozone, it will be around maximum around from 2.30 to 4.30. Okay. It should in fact, should be a little bit on this side. See how the when is the ozone seen and this thing. So, again you have to be measuring ozone more, if you want to capture the maximum. Okay. And you also see the variability given in this one. So, we also it again reminds us for the point if you recall we have said the standards should have the averaging time. Okay. If my ozone is caused has caused a problem here at this level and suppose I am looking at the average ozone level, ah, average level is 10 ppb, okay. whereas the problem and damage is already done. So, for ozone obviously, you should have the short term standards. So, I do not know if you recall we gave the ozone standard should be 1 hour standard, okay. whereas for example, things which are not showing no so much of variability or which do not have the immediate impact in terms of the health, then you can go for the long longer average time, but ozone will always have the shorter average time. So, will be the CO that will have the shorter average time. Okay. So, that is how the little thing which we, we which we know and which we should understand is that it helps us not only in putting the measurement device, also putting uh, making the standards and that we should know when to measure, what problem will occur what. Okay. And this also helps you this knowledge, uh, some somebody is working under you who comes with the data, you should always have the habit of like looking at the data and do the data will, do the data make sense. Okay. Well, obviously something comes to you and then say oh, how can COD be less than BOD, you can quickly find out. So, you can all right, you have done the measurement ozone very nice. Okay. Ozone is peaking at 7 o'clock. So, it tells you two things, suppose ozone is peaking at 2 o'clock, is that either the measurements are wrong or you have something to discover. Okay. It means, there is something more which you do not know is probably happening. Okay. So, always it is very important to look at the outlier data. Okay. The data within, within certain range which you know is sometimes do not tell much something which is outside the normal range that should open up your eyes you know and that should kind of excite you. Either you say well there is something wrong, you are not able to, you are doing the terrible thing in your analysis part or there is something more of science that is there to learn. Maybe you have the local source of this thing. Well we do tell lots of stories, but there is another story, <coughs> we are looking at the data uh, from for carbon monoxide and we were finding the same pattern as you see here. Okay. This was a traffic intersection in Delhi and then, uh, so this is like morning 9 o'clock or 9 to 10, things peaked, small peak and then almost disappeared and then at night 11 a.m. almost in the heart of Delhi, I mean you can imagine all the sources probably were disappearing okay. and then you know all the traffic come to seas and things like that and we and this was an automatic uh, instrument. So, we could not find any error, manual errors can happen, we could see the peaks clearly and then well all right, we said we do not know what is happening. Okay. We thought of all the signs and signs did not help us, so it sometimes might be a good idea to go to the site and see what is happening at 11 o'clock there where we are measuring the things. And in fact, we did go there and then we said well all right, once we went there and especially this was winter time. 
So, season become important, okay. The winter time <coughs> in a traffic intersection there are lots of uh, um, offices and commercial areas and things like that. So, wherever the, 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 then when we discovered we went 11 o'clock and we are trying to observe what is happening there and why the instrument should suddenly show the high level and then we could see that it was winter time. All the, there were a lot of commercial buildings and all the chokidars which were there, they will come out at a central place, okay, it is so cold, they will they'll fire anything and everything which they have and sit down coolly, you know, like the buildings are, you know, uh, are left up to, they got to take care of and then they will coolly sit down and then they will be just, you know, like taking nice heat and making themselves a little cozy and comfortable. And our sampler, the, 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 the cup which we were sampling the air was right on that spot where they were doing all these things. And then we knew that levels will obviously will go up and that was like more like source monitoring, you know, which they were, they were firing the things, you know. So, well, of course, that was the reason that was found out. So, that satisfied us and then of course, that is not the true thing because that is not the real thing, okay. That was more because of the local effect. So, you also have to be very sure that you are not capturing the local effect, okay. Because you capture the local effect, local thing can be anything, you know. Want to measure more at the regional level as to what the larger population is exposed to. And then, well, we just did tell them, well, you can continue to do what you are doing, but move a little bit away like 100 meters from this place and uh, which they did and the levels, you know, like dropped and become normal. Anyway, that was a little bit of story, but sometimes I remember, sometimes I do not remember. <coughs> anyway, good thing is that you have the, the watch coming up there, but sometimes there is a problem with this, this watch or the, the clock which you see here. One time there was a clock and you know, like uh, I was, and then this thing is high, but the board was here and the clock was up there and I see the students, you know, like uh, in the beginning everyone was at this level and after some time the level was <laughs> mostly, <laughs> that sort of thing. So, that can also happen, you know, with the, with the, with the clock there, you say, oh, you know, like, I said, well, what is this happening, you know, like, well, initially the levels were high like this and now the levels are like this, something you watch on television, you know, like the, the, the news reader reading like this, you know, like, you know, or, or sometimes like this. So, and then I figure it out, I said, well, all right, you are looking more on the clock than anything else. But now I think they have done very good thing on the lecture complex that, that, the clock is at the back, you know, like, <laughs> now the streets <laughs> turn back and things like that. Anyway, a little, <coughs> the real thing, I mean, I, I, I could feel it, you know, like, I was, in the beginning everything was fine and then, you know, like, maybe, and then afterwards they were just like, well, anyway, so let us talk to the, let us go to the next slide, let us see what is coming up. And this is a final answer to our ozone issue, okay. These people put into all the science together and into the mathematics and into all the modeling, little modeling that we had done for 4, 5, 6 equations. The people did the same modeling with hundreds of equations, okay, and with their rate constant and things like that. Okay, and then they plotted for a particular region as to how the variability in the ozone, these are the ozone isoplith and this model is called ECMA model, A E K M A, that is empirical kinetic modeling approach, okay. Well, because there are science also, a lot of empiricism also was there. So, one side we have they plotted <coughs> volatile organic carbon, let us say in terms of the PVV. And this was done both experimentally as well as with all the mathematics that they had. So, what they did was, um, you cannot vary the things, they had the, they call it balloon. So, they put the whole thing in the UV radiation, put everything what is there in the atmosphere, hydrocarbons, SO2, NOx, okay, and whatever you know the particles, and then you have the sensors coming out for ozone, for hydrocarbons. You can speciate these hydrocarbons, okay, that is all thing can be done. Then you can have the other things, and you also measuring the NO2. Also, we are measuring NO and that sort of thing. 
and then apart from this experimental data and then they also had the, the mathematics to tell this one and then they come up with this kind of thing. Obviously, you all can understand things have to be very non-linear and complicated. You know, to model atmosphere is very difficult. So, what they found were the levels were something like this. These are the isoplits and as you see the levels are going higher and higher and higher. Okay. So, this region, okay, when the ratio of VOC to NOx is around 4, okay, this is called knee region. Okay. Why they gave the knee region? Because it is like your knee. Okay. So, that is called the knee region and then depending on what you are, if you come in this area, this is called NOx limited region. Okay, because here the, you see here the NOx levels are low in, in this in this region. Okay. Okay. The some area where they, then here the VOC levels are low in this region. Okay. So VOC levels are low, it means this is a VOC limited region. Okay. And what you see here is um, you might suppose you are in this region, okay, as you might be having same NO2. Okay, but suppose your VOC emissions are large, you may make more and more of ozone. Okay, that you can see for yourself. Okay, and in fact, so uh, and and suppose you have the same uh, same VOC. Okay, and you increase, and suppose your NO2 got increased uh, or NOx for that matter. What will happen to ozone? you have the this level of VOC for example, and then you are in this region okay. and then after sometimes you had the more of the NOx emissions. Okay. What might happen to ozone? Decrease. Okay. So, it is not as simple as to say well the NOx emission will always increase the ozone concentration. Okay. It can decrease and then, but and but here, um, but then you should be able to explain the behavior with the science that you know. Okay, here it's a VOC limited region. Okay, so even if this in this region particularly, very low VOC. Okay, so the most of the NO2, most of the ozone formation is governed by the NO2 that you have. NO2, NO is not being oxidized more to NO2 because to oxidize to NO2 either it is ozone or the hydrocarbons. Right. There is no hydrocarbons because very low concentration 2 ppb, okay. you form the low this thing. Okay. And here as you go here, you have the more and more hydrocarbons and high levels of NOx as well, you continuously increase this one. Okay. You see here. And here you have the NOx limited region okay. and you have to have NOx. If there is no NOx, you can never make ozone, is not it? So, you have no NOx or very low NOx, no matter how much increase in VOC you are causing, do you see any change in ozone? It is stable, it is almost parallel to the x axis. Okay. You need NOx. So, you the shape also, you see there is a high slope here and almost no slope here can also be explained by this model and also both practical as well as theory. Okay. So, depending on, so you can see the difference that well increasing the NOx in this region, increasing the VOCs in this region does not cause any problem with ozone and the VOC, suppose you are already NOx high NOx then it can cause serious problem. Okay. And of course, you are in the middle region okay, both high both are uh, at moderate level then you can high. So, once they understood this one okay, you can very well design your strategy for the control of the ozone that you want to control NOx or you want to control VOCs and where are you as far as your reason is concerned. You might be here, well solutions will be different. If you are here, maybe the solutions can be different. Okay. If you are here, the solutions can be different okay. and that is also explained by the science. I will pass on more information to you on this one then also that also accounts for the formation of NOx disappearing and things like that uh, and things like that. So, what interesting thing the science we have been able to translate into the models, this is the maximum concentration, do we write here, they are the maximum concentrations. Okay. 
So, this is how we get. You should also understand that um, when it comes to the VOC emissions, they, they also come from natural sources and that is why it is again we again refer we can't part again and again. We are talking the many of the VOC emissions were from the trees. Okay? So, it is not only your emissions that you might have, but they may be the VOC emissions which may be of the natural origin or from the plants or whatever that source may be and as a result you may form more ozone and you say well I do nothing here, but ozone levels are high. Okay? So, that can be the reason one of the reasons could be that you have the natural sources. So, when it comes to the pollution control, the management of this thing, then you have to look at the many, many aspects. Okay. As far as this thing is concerned, we, I will give you more information about ECMA and we will do also one example maybe in the next class. Okay. Having said all these things, what is the primary reason if I ask you of this air pollution and the emissions what you see in the atmosphere or the air pollution you see? What is the primary reason if you have to pick one important thing? The burning of fuels. Very good. It is the combustion that creates 90 percent of the air pollution problem. Okay. If you have understood the combustion very well, again it comes to the science, then things can help a great deal. Okay. So, what I want to start uh, leave beside the atmospheric chemistry is the combustion processes, because we want to answer about the source now. Okay. Let us say we all know we have to burn the hydrocarbons and because and they come and then why the combustion because we all are crazy after energy. Okay. Energy is a big thing you know like if you do not if they if you do not need energy we will not be burning so many things, but always energy is required. You want to move somewhere here, you want to building construction, the energy is required, you want to um, travel, you want to have the electricity, everywhere combustion is required. Okay. So, if you need the energy, then the combustion is required and most of the time what we are firing really is C and H carbon and hydrogen. So, let us make it generalized. Okay. Then you are firing it with the oxygen and what you form is if everything goes well. Okay. We have to balance this equation because that is now we are getting in combustion, we are seriously getting in combustion. Okay. So, hydrogen is y, I have 2 y. Okay. So, what if I say y 2? What is not satisfied now? Please tell me what will be this x plus sure x by x plus are you sure y by 4 somebody said okay let us make it then simple thing, but it can make the things interesting and you can remember them. Let us make it small x because that will be much easier to write. x CO 2 x plus y by 4 as somebody said oxygen, okay. but this is not the complete thing. Okay. What else? I should write broadly speaking, not like some small species and things like so that. Energy. energy created, yes, plus energy that is fine. He is finding delta H. What else? 
there is a reason that as to what we are discussing you know so that you 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 always remember that what else that's why i want that answer to come from you can i put oxygen alone for the combustion can i put just the oxygen take out the oxygen from the air and separate it out and put it well, the whole air has to go in for the combustion right so along with the oxygen what will go is the that might come out as such okay all right let's not forget that okay you see reaction is i'm sure it is balanced but is there anything we can write little bit in better way than this exactly so you have to consider the o2 and nitrogen ratio and probably put the same number here and same number here right then we are doing a complete job okay although it is balanced i mean of course but then you have to put the same molar ratio the amount of the oxygen that you are taking in for stoichiometry the corresponding amount of n2 will enter in your system okay so we should <coughs> it's a good idea to write that number here and here so that really makes the things complete okay what that will be the molar ratio of what is that hmm yes you all can do that one tell me is a volume ratio will it be same as a molar ratio or not it has to be right it has to be so whatever is the volume ratio of nitrogen to oxygen same will be the molar ratio okay so what i can do here if you like it here 3.76 times this number and the same thing here 3.76 x plus y by 4 and that is the, the complete reaction that we have written the other thing which is important in the air pollution or the combustion rather is something what we call as air to fuel ratio okay okay generally it is taken in mass okay so i can find out the mass of air that is going into it and mass of the fuel that is going into it and mass to air to fuel ratio and if this air to fuel ratio well if you are a mechanical engineer you look the things look very trivial and say oh what what i am talking about but then there are many people who are not mechanical engineers or might have forgotten if it is greater than I write here observed A B S observed is greater than air to fuel ratio stoichiometry. This the system okay is called what? Lean or thin? Lean or rich? In terms of fuel, of course, if we talk in terms of if my observed air to fuel ratio in the process where I am doing the combustion is higher than the air to fuel ratio as per the stoichiometry which you get from this important reaction that we have written this thing will be in terms of the fuel this air to fuel ratio is lean right or have I said it the other way no this is lean lean mixture.
okay and if i say a by f observed is less than a by f stacky this is called mixture is rich mixture okay so <coughs> we have to deal with the rich, rich mixture okay we want to stop it here because if if you go by that watch we have to stop there but tell me i mean uh, uh, which which situation will be little better for me lean or rich mixture what will happen if i go with the rich mixture the combustion will be incomplete and i'll push out many of the hydrocarbons from where i can get the energy okay and my co emissions will be larger because that co will not be converted in this one but if we have the lean mixture that is a little better at least i am giving it full opportunity to react with oxygen because i am putting lot of excess oxygen because hard hard air fuel ratio rich means don't forget this really means excess oxygen less oxygen it does not mean that i can keep on putting oxygen hoping the things will happen because you may you may dilute the thing so much that it may not catch fire okay but here well it will probably will catch fire but lot of uh, combustion products will go out so most of the combustion processes will have the excess oxygen then what is required just to make sure that there is a complete burning of the fuel we'll do a little example on this one in the next class and uh, also talk a little bit more stuff related to combustion engineering okay